Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us tremendously. Uh, we live in uh, dunya we times because the, the, everything we're experiencing is the nature of the dunya. And as a Muslim ummah, everything we're experiencing is the nature of the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests and tries uh, his ummah. So uh, a lot of times you might talk to some friends that aren't Muslims, particularly if they're Christian. Apologize to any Christians here uh, in advance. There's nothing offensive. So they might say to you, if Islam is the truth, then why are you Muslims having so much trial and tribulation? So a lot of people, they get, Muslims get, you know, edgy. But you know what you say? If Allah loves the people, you test them. Mafum and Mukhalifah. If he doesn't love a people, he doesn't test them. So, alhamdulillah. And had an ummah marhuma, adabu hafid dunya. This ummah is a recipient of mercy. Its torment is in the world, not in the akhirah. There's a story, it depends on who narrates it. I think if Qadi Umar narrated it, it would be Qadi Iyad, who was a great scholar of the Maghrib, the Western lands. And if someone from Sham or Philistine relates it, it's Ibn Hajar al-Sqinani. But, but the story goes that, so I'm giving the Shami version. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. The Ibn Hajar was on a nice horse, he had the nice ulama robes, uh, and he was in the souk, and there was a Jewish man who was selling oil to people. So back then, you, you didn't have nice neat bottles, so you're scooping it out and pouring it into whatever vessel they brought. And so he's getting oil on him, and all the dust in the souk is mm. slime and dust mixed with the oil, is, is, so he's a mess. And so he, he looks at Ibn Hajar, uh, <clears throat> Rahimullah, and he says, your prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he might not have said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, he said, at dunya sijnu al-mu'min wa jannatu al-kafir, that the, the, the world is a prison for the believer and, and it's uh, paradise for those who lack belief or who have arrogantly rejected it, Kathy. And so he said, what, what sort of prison are you in when you have this beautiful horse and this nice regalia? And what sort of paradise am I in that I'm this messy wretch? And Ibn Hajar said to him, he said that the, the bliss and the blessings and the delights that I will experience in paradise, inshallah, make what I'm in, the state I'm in now, look like I'm in a prison, in a dungeon. And, and the torment and the hardship that you're going to experience in hell makes this wretched state you're in now appear like heaven. And so the story goes, the man took shahadu on the spot. <laughs> Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. So, all things are relative. You know, uh, brothers and sisters in Philistine certainly are having a very difficult situation. Uh, but we have to look at it through the lens of how we're tested. So they're tested and we're tested. They're tested with deprivation, no water, no sanitation, uh, no electricity, for large periods of time, no internet, uh, no security, no food. Two great blessings we were mentioning earlier. 
uh, I'll say well, when Allah says فَلْيَعْبُدُوا رَبَّ هَذَا الْبَيْتِ الَّذِي أَطْعَمَهُمْ مِنْ جُوعٍ وَآمَنَهُمْ مِنْ خَوْفٍ Let them worship the Lord of this sacred house who has fed them and driven hunger away from them and has made them secure against fear. And so the, we're, they're being challenged in terms of there's no food, there's no security. And the challenge for them is sabr, is patience. And we're being tested with abundance. We have too much food. That's why you go to the supermarket, there's a whole section for antacids. And you, you have all sorts of gym plans, looking for the ultimate gym plan to lose weight. And all sorts of diet plans, you have the keto diet and the paleo diet and the this diet and the that diet. And you have Weight Watchers, Anonymous, and you have Noom, and Zoom, and by Zoom, that's something else. But you have Noom, and you have all these plans to lose weight. You have all these gym plans, all these antacids. Why? Because we have too much food. We have, they have no houses. Like, what, 70% of all the residences in northern Gaza has been bombed. And it's not much better in southern Khan Yunus and Rafa. Like 30% of the people have been killed in southern Gaza, where the people are told to go to. So they don't have houses. We have too much house. The Prophet could barely stand up in this house. We don't want to buy the house if it doesn't have a cathedral ceiling. So if we live in a cathedral, so no, I'll pass on that one. The ceiling's too low. <laughs> the ceiling's only as high as the masjid here. We want it even higher. Too much food, too much house. We turn the tap on, we have water. If, if the water doesn't come out, we'll inundate the water company with calls. My water's not working. And they, they don't have taps. If where there is a tap, there is no running water. If their running water is dirty because they bombed the sewage treatment plants. They learned that from us, the United States. You know, we bombed the sewage treatment plants in Iraq, knowing that it would create waterborne diseases. A stratagem of war, knowing that a disproportionate number of those affected by the waterborne diseases will be children. And so we killed, as of 1998, and so the, the, uh, the, the war, second war, was what, 2001, 2003, 2003. So that's another, so Madeleine Albright famously said, do you think killing half a million children was worth it? He said, yes, it was, without blinking an eye. So that means that's halfway through the regime. You go to 2003, a million children died for nothing. Why? Because if the strategy of killing all those people, and kill, including all those children, worked, we wouldn't have to invade and occupy Iraq. So it didn't, those kids died for, died for nothing. That's what we did. So, like Joe Biden's not new. He says, you know, no ceasefire. You know, Israel has a right to defend herself. As if, you know, murdering innocent people is self-defense. Allah Mustan. But in any case, their test is the test of patience. Our test is the test of thankfulness, gratitude. Their test is sabr. Our test is shukr. And Allah says, if we pass the test, he'll give us more. وَلَنْ شَقَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ If you give thanks, I will give you any more. I'll give you even more. But their reward is greater. 
the reward of sabr is the only action mentioned in the Quran as having an unlimited reward. The, the patient ones will be given their reward with no limit, numerical limits. Uncountable reward. Uncountable reward. وَبَشِّرُ الصَّابِرِينَ Give glad tidings to those who patiently persevere. And so look what they're testing. Surely we're going to test you. So we'll, we'll get ours sooner or later. But it's emphatic. So if you have Lam al Qasim before a present tense verb and Nun al Tawqeed, or Lam at the beginning, Nun al Tawqeed, Wala Nabluwanakum. Then this is Lam al Qasim, what Taqdir, Wallahi. Wallahi. I swear by Allah, we're going to test you with something of fear. So, bishay. So, the ummah isn't going to experience fear to a total extent that overwhelms us. So, there's fear in Palestine, there's not fear in America. People might get a little nervous, people looking at them funny. They heard a story of someone over here in Pennsylvania, that sister's hijab was snatched, but generally, we're not going around in fear. But, so shape, something of fear. Well, khawf, khawf wajua and hunger. So there's definitely hunger in Palestine right now. There's some other places, but generally, Muslims uh, have ample food to eat. Look at various parts of the Ummah. Good food to all of the great cuisines are Muslim. Right? The Persian, the Turkish, the Levant, Palestine, Lebanon, all the great cuisines, Southeast Asia, Tikka chicken was tikka kurim chicken musalla. The son biryani, samosa, shawarma. All these, all the great cuisines are Muslim. Peking duck is a Muslim dish in China. We, our, our housemaid in, in college was Chinese Muslim. His family is living in Burma. His uncle had a a Chinese Muslim restaurant in Queens, New York. We used to go there. We got educated. Peking duck. So if say, so what's the most famous dish in China? Peking duck. Peking duck is a Muslim dish. <clears throat> so Muslims are eating good, generally. There's some hunger, starvation here or there. And virtually every case is, is due to political factors not due to environmental factors like drought, famine. It's bishay. Bishay in minachof, waljua. So in Gaza right now, people are tested with fear. No safe place to go. Even the hospital is being bombed. And then uh, just all these incredible, fictitious stories being made up that our president parrots like the Manchurian candidate, it's a chip in his brain. Joe Biden, tell them that the nurse who was an Israeli actress, who was hysterical with no tears, said that there are weapons and things in the hospital, so everyone leave, like ethnically cleanse yourselves. 
And everyone in the hospital, foreign doctors and nurses, Palestinians, there's nothing here. There's terrorists. Here they are. All their faces are blacked out. <laughs> oh, you know, you get blurry face. Here are the terrorists. They're all blurry faced. They all have light hands, no, no brown, like there's no tan skin Palestinians. They're all Europeans. And they're terrorists, but you don't want their faces to be seen. So if they're terrorists, you're going to take them out and shoot them. What do you care if their faces are seen? And the Manchurian candidate repeats, there are terrorists. And even a nurse testified. And they're chopping the heads off babies. And the, the next day, the White House puts out, well, he didn't really see that. This Mossad just told him to say that. So he said it because he's the Manchurian candidate, Joe Biden. Don't trip over the stairs. May Allah Ta'ala have mercy on all of us. May Allah guide Joe Biden. May dua for Joe Biden's guidance. Allah Mahdi, Joe Biden. Wa ghairihim. Ghairihim. Min haulahim mujrimeen. Ameen. The Prophet prayed for Omar and Abu Jahl. They're worse than Joe Biden. They were trying to kill the Prophet. And he prayed for their guidance. You shouldn't hesitate. It's better to have them guided than to stay where they are and with the mentality they have, right? Allah guide them all. Ameen. I mean, you're wrong. So our test is shukr. And the bad news is, وَقَلِيلٌ مِّنْ عِبَادِيَ الشَّكُورِ Very few of my servants are truly thankful. Very few of my servants are truly thankful. You want to gauge our thankfulness for the food that we have that they don't have in Gaza? See how much we throw away when we have our dinners. See how the dumpster fills up with food. Is that shukr? Is that empathy with our brothers and sisters? Very few of my servants are truly thankful. So our challenge is to increase our shukr. The Palestinians are very patient people. They've been through this before. This is the worst. They've been through it. They've been through it outside of Philistine. They've been through it in Sabra and Shatila. They've been through it in Beirut in 1982. 18,000 dead between the Lebanese and Palestinian civilians. 30,000 wounded. And they haven't given up their struggle for freedom. They haven't given up. Some of you might have seen uh, Ha'aretz. So if you want to know what's going on in Israel, you're not, unfortunately, you're not going to get it from the New York Times in the East and the San Francisco Chronicle in the West. Read Ha'aretz, the Israeli paper. The leading Israeli. You get it. You get a discussion, debate that you're not going to find here. You get information you're never going to get here. So there was an article in Haaretz where the, the author said, Israel's through. He's, Israel's through because these Palestinians are so tough and they're not going anywhere. And uh, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, and our, and our efforts to eliminating them, we, we've destroyed every moral principle that Judaism stands for, and this is supposed to be a Jewish state. He said, this state is run by neo-Nazis. This is an Israeli paper. He said, the neo-Nazis are running this state. And, and so, and, and, and Allah, he didn't say Allah. Like, God has placed us against these people, and they're so tough that we're not going to get rid of them. So he said, like, if... if he said, you might as well move to San Francisco, London, or Paris. Just leave. Ethnically, ethnically cleanse Israel. 
he didn't say that. But that's the implication of what he said. It's just leave because it's done. Well, if there's no morality, there's no state. Ahmed Shawqi. So a, 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 a nation, in the Mal'umam, nations are none other than the moral morals that support them. And when their morals go, they will soon follow. And he's saying the moral morality of Israel is gone. Therefore, the state is gone. And so it's just a question of time before the physical apparatus of the state just collapses. There's no foundation. <clears throat> So may, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us in our struggle to be, to be, to show gratitude, to be thankful for the blessings we enjoy. One aspect of shukr is, they say, a shukru min jinsin ni'mah, that thankfulness, gratitude is categorical to the blessing. أَلَمْ يَجِدْكَ يَتِيمًا فَآوَى وَوَجَدَكَ ضَالًا فَهَدَى وَوَجَدَكَ آئِلًا فَعُرْنًا فَأَمَّا الْيَتِيمَ فَلَا تَقْهَرْ وَأَمَّا السَّائِلَ فَلَا تَنْهَرْ وَأَمَّا بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ فَحَدِّثْ So we found, did we not find you an orphan and we gave you shelter? And we found you straying and we guided you. You didn't know the scripture. We blessed you with the scripture. You didn't know the details of faith. We taught you the details of the faith. And we found you impoverished and we reached you. So the Prophet وسلم, he was an orphan. He was poor. وسلم, he loved the poor. And Allah enriched him, enriched him with the wealth of Khadija and the wealth of Abu Bakr and the wealth of Uthman and the wealth of Abdul Rahman bin Auf. Therefore, What's your gratitude? Shukru min jins and ni'ma. fala taqahar. As for the orphan, don't don't push the orphan away harshly. fala tenhar. As for one whose circumstances lead them to ask of you, don't reject them. Because we enriched you. We took care of you when you were an orphan. And these blessings of knowledge that we gave you, an insight into the fundamental nature of the human being. Proclaim it, teach it to others, speak about it, don't hide it. And so our, one of our challenges is how do we share the wealth that Allah Ta'ala has blessed us with. <clears throat> Sooner or later, there's going to be an opportunity to get food and water and things and to us. Are we going to be generous? Are we going to share the wealth that Allah has blessed us with? Share the food that Allah has blessed us with? Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is testing us. <clears throat> and he says, in terms of shukr, very few of my servants are truly thankful. Wa qalilun min ibari ash-shukur. Allahumma ja'alna jami'an min ash-shakirin. Allah make all of us amongst those who are thankful. Min ash-shakirin, ya Allah. Min ash-shakirin, ya Allah. And then Allah says, if, if we can do that, he will increase us. <clears throat> Just as he increased those in Philistine in their faith through the tribulations.
This is a, this is a powerful macabre. Like, the Palestinians don't have anyone but Allah. The surrounding Arab countries aren't going to help us. United States definitely isn't going to help us. The European Union isn't going to help us. The African nations have their own struggles with European and American and Chinese and Russian imperialism. The Asian states aren't going to help us. So who do we have? Allah. Hasbun Allah, hasbun Allahu wa ni'am al wakil. Allah suffices us, what an excellent one to give our affair to. And look how Allah is working. You, you've seen unprecedented support for Palestine. Hence the desperate measure of those who would work to continue to occupy and oppress the people of Palestine. Unprecedented. These mobilizations for Palestine. Shutting down highways, you never saw, saw that in the past. Shutting down highways, you never saw the level of support from the Jewish community. They shut down Grand Central Station, like 30,000 Jews, not in my name. Now you're not gonna do this in the name of my Judaism, in the name of the Holocaust. You're not gonna do it. Took over Congress. Where's that coming from? Allah. Allah. Wallahi junoodu samawati wal ard. Allah controls the forces of the heavens and the earth. This MSNBC, for all their liberalness, when it comes to war, they, they blow the trumpet louder than anyone else because they're owned by GE, a major war contractor. GE's model, we bring good things to life. They also bring death to good things. You see the commentary, commentator, you would, is, is this America? This, this African American lady, I don't know her name, I don't follow it like that, but like, is this Nigeria? This is America? You know, what, what are the Palestinians supposed to do? Turn over Hamas? Like, Hamas is the government. So, and they have the guns. So you just turn them over? You know, just going on and on, point by point. Like, you never heard that before. All these people looking at the resilience of the Palestinians coming to Islam. I've never seen anything like it. Maybe you have. I haven't. There's a young lady, Megan Rice, the TikToker. Right? She looks at the Palestinians' resilience. So where's that coming from? Oh, they're Muslim. Let me read the Quran. It gets deeper and deeper in Quran and, and puts up her, her website. website and gets 5,000 people reading Quran with her who aren't Muslims. And a couple of days ago, she took Shahada. Another TikTok Jewish young lady took Shahada at Tet Leaf in Chicago at the hand of uh, Dr. Ali Dia, Dia. All over. I know someone in the middle of, I won't say the city, middle of nowhere in America there's a lot of people taking shahada in a, in a masjid and the imam is telling them to bear witness that Jesus is a messenger of Allah and, and not the son of God. Is that right? Because I thought it was just shahada is land hello Muhammad Rasulullah. So she's going to turn, sir, and is the imam giving all these people the shahada properly? Because so many people are coming. One young man called me, uh, Someone directed him to me. I want to be Muslim. He took his shahada uh, two jumas ago in Virginia. 
Someone else called me like, uh, are you near Stanford, Connecticut? There's a young man in Stanford who wants to take Shahada. Like, all over this country. Like, where's that coming from? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, uh, a lot of Muslims, some, not some despairing, depressed. Don't be depressed. The people killed there, they're all martyrs. I get confused because I'm East Coast, West Coast. It's like Biggie and Tupac. <laughs> but do you have the easy pass here or the fast track? Fast track. All those people being killed, they got, they're in the fast track lane, straight to Jannah. The Ghairi Hisab, no reckoning. We're out there in the traffic jam, <laughs> trying to get in the right lane. This lane closed on us. Now we got to go over there, and that was backed up. And there's zoom, 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 straight into Jannah. So we, we don't secularize your, your, your thought process. If you secularize your thought process, you'll start, oh, these people kill unjustly. This is the dunya. If that's all you have, you, that, you might end up thinking like that. But if you consider this dunya is nothing compared to the akhir. Like, what is, what is the dunya? Dunya is one of the early <coughs> uh, salaf said it beautifully. A dunya sa'a. Like sa'a is in an hour. Sa'a could be a, a moment. They said, darabahu uh, famata ala sa'atihi. He hit him and he dropped dead on the spot. Ala sa'atihi. A dunya sa'a. This world is just a moment. Fej'alha ta'a. Fill that moment with the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I've mentioned this before. Some of you might have heard it. If you took even, let's say, 100 years, which would be about as long as people usually live in this 100, 300, 4 years old, and uh, if you put it on a, a, a line, and that line started with, let's say, the creation of Adam, and then it extended to the rest of eternity, what, 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 would, what would those hundred years look like? You wouldn't even be able to detect it. It would be so minute. From Adam salam to eternity. What is your hundred years, 80, 90 years? It's nothing. It's nothing. And so what's important isn't how we leave this world. That, that's important, but what's really important is, oh, let me rephrase that. How you leave is important. <laughs> but how much time you spend here is not important. What you... How the time you're going to spend for the rest of eternity, that's what that's what's important. That's why if you if you're miserable in this year world and you died, your building was bombed over you, and that's you were patient with your conditions and you maintain a good opinion of Allah, and you understood those family members who just got Martyred will spend the rest of eternity in unimaginable bliss. Abdullah al Ibadi Salihin of Il Jannati Mala Ainu Nuraat Wala Udunun Samiat Wala Khatur ala Kalbi Bashar. Allah is prepared for His righteous servants in paradise that which no eye has ever seen in terms of its beauty, that which no ear has ever heard in terms of his beauty and that which no human heart has ever even imagined. And then that's forever, for eternity. If our minds are secularized, we don't, we don't appreciate shahada. 
martyrdom. And these, these tribulations, Allah says, one reason he sends it is so he'll take martyrs. In yamsaskum qarh, faqad ammasa al-qawma qarhum mithlu. Wa tilka al-ayyam nudawiluha bayna al-nas. Wa li'alam Allahu al-lazina amanu wa yatakhidha minkum shuhada. Wa Allahu la yuhibbu al-zalimun. Wa Allahu la yuhibbu al-zalimin. So if some hardship, defeat, weakness, setback has afflicted you, you should know that the other people were similarly afflicted. Right. Well, when the Jews were weak, what did they go through? They went through some very difficult times. You said, we're weak now, they're powerful, influential. True. But they were not always the way they are, and we were not always the way we are. <clears throat> so Allah alternates these fortunes in order that he will show. Allah will show which of you believe and to take from your ranks martyrs. And so if it's always easy, it's easy to believe. You know, it's always good, no challenge, always strong and mighty. When we were like that, do we fulfill the rights over us to humanity? Do we make da'wah the way we should? Do we, do we approach the international slave trade the way that we should? Shut it down? It was shut down in some regions. You read Sylvain de Diouf. Uh, resistance, Muslim resistance to the slave trade. Muslims resisted. But as an ummah, did we resist the way we should or were we facilitating it? Did we give da'wah the way we should or we were content just to keep it to ourselves? No. We have a Yom al Qiyamah. We'll see. So the Jews were weak. When they were weak, they went through probably far worse than what we went through. The Holocaust is real. There is no Muslim Holocaust. We've had some hard times, but what they went through, there were some difficulties. The, the ethnic cleansing of places like Macedonia, uh, what the Bosnians went through, Twice, uh, the the oppressive uh, oppression and the suppression of Islam under the Manchu dynasty, a lot of Muslims perished. But in such a small area, like in such a small period of time, six million. If you want to read about it? A very objective British researcher, three volumes, the Third Reich, and the coming of the Third Reich. The Third Reich at war, and then the demise of the Third Reich. It's voluminous. Every time I go to the local library, I try to read a little bit. You, uh, unbelievable. It's unbelievable, like what humans can do. And the tragedy of the Zionist is that they're doing exactly what Hitler did. So Allah tests us. It's like the bald man, right, the blind man, the bald man, and the leper. And Allah cured them all. And two of them, oh, I was always like this, and all this wealth I got, I inherited. Kabir on Kabir, Kabir on Kabir, generation after generation. Don't I know you? Once you bawled and Allah gave you hair and gave you wealth, and he lied, he sent them back to where he was. And only one of them, I, you know, this is from Allah, take whatever you want. Bismillah. So, you know, those people, the Netanyahu's and bin Kavir's of the world, once you guys 
poor and weak and downtrodden wasn't a tyrant brutalizing you. And so shouldn't you be more compassionate and understanding? This Hamas though, Hamas was in there in 1947-48 when you killed 10,000 Palestinians, destroyed 500 villages, 70 documented massacres, who knows how many undocumented, like the one at the area I seen. There was no Hamas when you did that. Hamas was in there in 1982 when you bombed Beirut for a month straight, killed 18,000 people, wounded 30,000. There was no Hamas. So is it Hamas or is it your lack of gratitude? Shukr. Thank Allah that he saved us. And we said never again, except in Gaza, except in Beirut. Shukr, category to the blessing. Allah saved you, Allah was merciful. How are you going to do? May Allah make us amongst the shakiri. May Allah make us amongst the aqilla, amongst the few. May Allah give us tawfiq. Give us tawfiq. May Allah bless us. You know, nudah wilu habayn al nas. This ummah is going to be strong again. It might be sooner than we think. How are we going to do it? We're going to be vengeful. No, no, we're strong, let's get the Jews. Are we going to be prophetic? Antum tulaqa. Fatih Mecca. Prophet could have taken his revenge. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He could have taken his revenge for Hamza. Radiallahu an. He could have taken his revenge for Mus'ab bin Umayyah, radiallahu an. He could have taken his revenge for the first shahida in this Ummah Sumayyah. He could have taken revenge for Ali Yasin. He could have taken revenge for Qabbad, uh, Qabbad bin Arat. He could have taken his revenge. All those Muslims killed by the Quraysh. But he could have taken his revenge against the people of Ta'if to bring the mountains down and wipe them out. I wasn't sent to damn people. I was sent to teach people. I was sent to save people. He could have taken his revenge against Khalid. Khalid rolling up in Medina. Just like the leader of the bloods rolling up into the headquarters of the Crips. Man, what are you doing here? You make a phone call right quick. You rolled up in here, you're not rolling out. Man, Khalid rolled up in Medina. Khalid, what took you so long to come to your senses? Shadu an la ilaha illallah wa shadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu. We follow, we follow a prophet, and it's it's going to be our shukr that leads to the increase that we can't even fathom. It's going to be our moral integrity. It's going to be remembering how it was when we were weak, informing how we treat others who might be our enemies when they're weak. It's, it's, and that, that's what's going to bring people to Islam. That's what's going to bring people to Islam. So may Allah Ta'ala bless the people in Palestine to continue to be patient, to continue to earn those great, great rewards that Allah has promised the patient, to continue to inspire people with their patience. May Allah bless us to be thankful and to do our part to uplift those and be the voice of those who are left to be patient or left without a voice or left without a helper, 
left without an anyone to assist. وما لكم لا تقاتلون في سبيل الله والمستضعفين من الرجال والنساء والسبيان سبيان والدان والولدان الذين يقولون ربنا أخرجنا من هذه القرية الظالم أهل الظالم أهلها واجعل لنا بلدونك وليا واجعل لنا بلدونك نصيرا Ya Allah, our Lord, delivers of us from this town whose people are oppressors. Men, women, and children who cry out, Our Lord, make from us for yourself, from yourself one who will protect us and make from us for make for us from yourself one who will help us. May Allah bless us to be amongst the protectors and amongst the helpers. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless our sisters to be steadfast. That's a min sha'ir al-Islam, a sign of Islam in a, in a land that you see hijabs. Min sha'ir al-Islam. May Allah bless those banners and indicators of Islam to fly with dignity in the wind, to, to represent the, the dignity that Allah intends for a human being. Allah didn't intend for us to cut or mark ourselves up. If you have tattoos, it's, it's good. You convert it to Islam. Maybe you were born Muslim, you went off the rails a little bit. It's okay, I'm not trying to hate on anyone. But that's not from our tradition. That's not from our way. So if that's your state, don't get any more. And the ones you have, may Allah bless you to have overcome whatever led you in that state to do that to your body. To have piercings all over. The women pierce their ears, not their noses and eyelids and tongues. How oh, you eat dinner? <laughs> no. That's from the, the is of the human that the Muslim represents. Like beautiful clothing, ripped up jeans and all. What's, what's the dignity in that? I'm amazed at the ripped up jean phenomenon. You know what's amazing about it? You wear your jeans till they're ripped up, throw them in the garbage, and then go to the store and spend $150 to buy some pre-ripped up jeans. You had the authentic, genuine article, and you went and bought some fake ones. You had the genuine article for free. <laughs> Amazing. May Allah bless us to be dignified. If you have ripped up jeans, it's cool. I'm not trying to hate on anybody. It's all right. But don't, don't try to encourage others while you work out a few things. You know. We make making dua for you that you work it out. It's cool. We're not trying to hate on anybody. But I just can't understand it. Ajeeb. Um, it's ajeeb. So may Allah bless us to hold, have that dignity. May Allah bless us to appreciate this deen. Why are you people coming to it? You, you probably feel silly if you're like, I don't know if I'm Muslim anymore. You can't even say it right anymore. You know, it's a Muslim. You're trying to sound like the people taking it from you. I don't know if I'm Muslim anymore. Then half America coming into Islam. Like you sitting there looking all silly, like. <laughs> then too arrogant and proud to come back. Admit you made a mistake. Yeah, I kind of messed up. <laughs> you sure did. Like, how do you feel? No, be proud. Pick your head up. And, and help to, who's going to receive all these people? I believe there's going to be mass conversion. Because it's been foretold by the, by the, by the awliya. They foretold it. And Muhammad ibn al-Rawas, the great Rifai Sheikh, at the end of the 
18th century, when America was just forming, the, at the end of time, when the, the nations of the West are at the peak of their power, and they're at the height of their opposition to Islam, Allah is going to blow over those lands, the Muhammadic breezes, and Nafahat al Muhammadiyah. And they're going to touch, it's going to touch the hearts of the people. And you're going to see someone who yesterday was the most intense enemy of Islam today be a wali, be a saint. We've seen a uh, Javan Van, Van Cloverman, Gert Wilder's right hand man. So you know, some even know a story of apostate. Get his book, sell it on Amazon, The Evil Empire. If you have a local bookstore in Kenora, there that's even better. But he, he's, he's going to write the book that finishes Islam in Europe. He's, he's a member of probably one of the most virulent anti-Muslim parties in Europe. He starts researching. This isn't what they were teaching me. Goes digs a little deeper. Then he made the fatal mistake. You know what the fatal mistake was? No. He had a list of questions and he sent them to Abdul Hakim Murad. <laughs> Game over. <laughs> and, and then he becomes Muslim. You see a man who yesterday was amongst the most bitter enemies of Islam, tomorrow be a saint. And Allah. And you see the people entering to Islam in crowds. And all of this will be a gift to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This was Sidi Rawah said. And so we have our part to play. We have to prepare ourselves to receive these people, to teach them, to show to show them the beauty of Islam. We have to be wise, we have to be dignified. When the, the Megan Rice the sister puts her website up, she has 5,000 people reading the Quran. Here come the Muslims. Someone said, oh, those are Muslims. Hey, nah, we got some Muslims like this. Shias aren't real Muslims. Be careful. Sunnis aren't real Muslims. Be double careful. Sufis aren't real Muslims. They're munharifun, mubtadi'un. Be careful. The Wahhabis are like, all this garbage come into 5,000 people who are trying to just find Islam. And that shows it's from Allah because despite all of that nonsense, this sister took Shahada anyway. It's from Allah. إِنَّمَا أَمْرُهُ إِذَا أَرَادَ شَيْئًا أَنْ يَقُولَ لَهُ كُنْ فَيَكُونْ so when Allah wants something, said be and it is. So don't get depressed. Don't get depressed. Don't get downtrodden. Oh, we're so helpless. We're so hopeless. Look what's happening in Gaza. They're all shaheed. Don't worry about them. Palestinians are going to be fine. Inshallah ta'ala. They're going to be fine. How are we going to be? How are we going to be? And Shuhada'u Khamsa, we'll stop with this. The martyrs are five. There are other categories. These five mentioned in one sound hadith. Shuhada'u Khamsa. Al Mat'un, one who dies in the plague, in the Ta'un. Al Mat'un, Wal Mabtun. One who dies of severe stomach problems. People dying in Gaza. Diarrhea, they're drinking dirty water. Diarrhea, typhoid, dysentery, etc. al maptoon al gharik one who drowns. sahib al hadmi one who dies in a demolished structure. All them people dying in demolished homes and hospitals, all shuhada. 
وَشَهِيدُ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ The one who dies defending the faith. So there's shuhada. There's shuhada. What's our state? So don't be depressed. This, this, uh, this is a ter- don't, Allah has created all of this. الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن عملا أم حسبتم أن تدخلوا الجنة ولما يأتكم مثل الذين خلوا من قبلكم مستهم الضراء والبأساء وزلزلوا حتى يقول الرسول والذين آمنوا معه متى نصر الله you think you're into paradise and there's not yet come to, to you? The likes of those who preceded you? They encountered every disease and natural calamities and disasters. And they were shaken. Until the messenger, not Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa one of the earlier messengers. And the believers with him, they said, when is the help of Allah coming? Ala inna nasrullahi qareeb. The help of Allah is near. Ahasibah al-nasu an yutraku an yaqulu amanna wa hum la yuftanun wa laqad fatanna al-ladheena min qablihim fa li'anamanna allahu al-ladheena sadaqu wa li'anamanna al-kathibin do people think they'll be left alone merely saying we believe and not be tested? I believe, I'm Muslim. Tadbir, Allahu Akbar. Alhamdulillah. How are you going to be when the tests come? We tested those who preceded them in order that Allah will show which of them are truthful and which of them are liars. So are we truthful? What are we truthful about what? Qul? Say, O oh Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and then when we read it, قُلْ Say, and then we read it, so we say it. إِنَّ صَلَاتِي وَنُسُكِي وَمِحْيَايَ وَمَمَاتِي لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ لَا شَرِيكَ لَهِ وَبِذَلِكَ أُمِرْتِ وَأَنَا أَوَّلُ الْمُسْلِمِينَ Say, Surely my prayer, my sacrifice, my living, my dying are all for Allah, the Lord of all the worlds, and with this I have been commanded, and I'm the first to submit as a Muslim. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who al awwal min hadhi al ummah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, our Prophet is the first of this ummah to submit as a Muslim. Are we truthful or are we liars? That's we should ask ourselves in those private conversations that we have with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we look in the mirror, am I truthful? Am I a liar? Is everything for Allah to the best of my ability? May Allah give us tawfiq. May Allah bless our brothers and sisters in Palestine. May Allah bless our brothers and sisters here and in every corner of this earth. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا اللهم يا لطيف ألطف بنا فيما جرت به المقادير اللهم يا لطيف ألطف بنا فيما جرت به المقادير اللهم يا لطيف ألطف بنا فيما جرت به المقادير اللهم اجعل جمعنا هذا جمعا محوما وتفرقنا من بعد تفرقا معصوما ولا تدع عندنا ولا فينا ولا معنا شقيا ولا محروما اللهم بارك على هذه هذه الجالية هذه الجماعة الطيبة يا الله بارك عليهم في تعامهم وشرابهم وبيوتهم وأولادهم وبناتهم وأعمالهم وأشغالهم ونشاطاتهم يا الله اللهم بارك عليهم أجمعين يا الله اللهم بارك على هذه الأمة المحمدية يا الله اللهم من أراد خيرا لهذه الأمة المحمدية فوافقه إلى كل خير ومن أراد شر لها وللمسلمين فخذه أخذ عزيز مقتدير واجعل تدميرهم تدمير تدبيرهم تدميرهم 
اللهم عليك بعادة الإسلام اللهم عليك بعادة الإسلام اللهم عليك بعادة الإسلام اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من الهم والحزن ونعوذ بك من العجز والكسل ونعوذ بك من الجبن والبخل ونعوذ بك من غلبة الدين وقهر الرجال ونعوذ بك من عين لا تدمع ونعوذ بك من عين لا تدمع ونعوذ بك من عين لا تدمع ونعوذ بك من قلب لا يخشع ونعوذ بك من قلب لا يخشع ونعوذ بك من قلب لا يخشع ونعوذ بك من قول لا يسمع ونعوذ بك من قول لا يسمع ونعوذ بك من قول لا يسمع ونعوذ بك من دعاء لا يرفع ونعوذ بك بك من دعاء لا يرفع ونعوذ بك من دعاء لا يرفع ونعوذ بك من نفس لا تشبع ونعوذ بك من نفس لا تشبع ونعوذ بك من نفس لا تشبع ونعوذ بك من غلبة الدين وقهر الرجال يا الله اللهم اقسم لنا من خشيتك ما تحول به بيننا وبين معاصيك ومن طاعتك ما تبلغنا بها جنتك ومن اليقين ما يهون علينا به مصائب الدنيا ومتعنا بأسماعنا وأبصارنا وقوتنا ما أحييتنا واجعله الوارث منا واجعل ثأرا على من ظلمنا وانصرنا على من عادانا ولا تجعل مصيبتنا في ديننا ولا تجعل مصيبتنا في ديننا ولا تجعل مصيبتنا في ديننا ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا ولا تسلط علينا بذنوبنا من لا يخافك ولا يرحمنا يا أرحم الراحمين يا أرحم الراحمين يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم إنا نسألك هدى نسألك الهدى والتقى والغنى والعفاف والمغفرة اللهم إنا نسألك الهدى والتقى والغنى والعفاف والمغفرة اللهم إنا نسألك الهدى والتقى والغنى والعفاف والمغفرة اللهم إن أنت المولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين ببركة القرآن العظيم وبحرمة من أرسلته رحمة للعالمين سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم نتوسل إليك بهذا الدعاء بأسمائك الحسنى يا الله يا رحمن يا رحيم يا مالك يا قدوس يا سلام يا مؤمن يا محيم يا عزيز يا جبار يا خالق يا بارع يا مصور يا قفا يا قهار يا وحاب يا, يا رزاق يا الفتاح يا فتاح يا عليم يا قابل الباسد الخافض الرافع المعز المذل السميع البصير اللطيف يا لطيف يا لطيف يا لطيف اللهم يا لطيف ألطف بنا فيما جرت به المقادير مقادير فيما جرت به المقادير ونتوسل إليك يا الله باسمك الأعظم يا الله يا الله يا الله يا الله يا الله, يا الله يا الله تنصرنا للقوم الكافرين يا الله يا الله وحد صفوفنا وطهر قلوبنا وثبت أقدامنا ووحد صفوفنا ووحد صفوفنا ووحد صفوفنا فانصرنا للقوم الكافرين سبحان ربك رب العظمة خفف وفرج عن أهل فلسطين اللهم فرج عن أهل فلسطين يا الله اللهم فرج عن أهل في فلسطين يا الله فرج عنهم يا الله وانصرهم يا الله وانصرهم يا الله وانصرهم يا الله وانصرنا في هذا البلد يا الله وانصر المسلمين في كل مكان يا الله في كل زمان يا الله يا الله لا قد قلت وقولك الحق وكان حق كان علينا نصر المؤمنين وكان حقا علينا نصر المؤمنين وكان حقا علينا نصر نصر المؤمنين فانصرنا يا الله فانصرنا يا الله 
تنصرنا يا الله استجب دعاءنا يا الله استجب دعاءنا يا الله استجب دعاءنا يا الله يا الله يا الله استجب لنا يا الله استجب لنا يا الله فقلت فقال يا الله فادعوني استجب لكم فنحن ندعوك يا الله فهل نحن واقفون عند بابك يا الله عند باب خيرك يا الله عند باب عند باب جودك يا الله عند باب فضلك يا الله عند باب رحمتك يا الله وسخائك يا الله وكرمك يا الله فلا تردنا خائبين يا الله بل ردنا غانمين سالمين آمنين يا الله يا الله يا الله يا الله فرجا أهلنا في فلسطين عن إخواننا وأخواتنا وفي غيره من البلدان يا الله في كشمير في السودان في ليبيا في الهند في أفغانستان في العراق في السودان في في الحبشة في إريتريا في تونس يا الله في ليبيا يا الله في ناجير يا الله في سنغال يا الله في غامبيا غامبيا يا الله في كل في كل مكان يا الله في أوروبا يا الله في فرنسا يا الله هنا في هذا البلد يا الله الأرض أرضك يا الله والعباد عبادك يا الله والقوة والحول لا حول ولا قوة إلا بك يا الله فنسألك بحولك وقوتك أن تخفف عن إخواننا وأخواتنا المسلمين والمسلمات في فلسطين أنت مولانا فانصرنا للقوم الكافرين بحرمة ببركة القرآن العظيم وبحرمة من أرسلته رحمة للعالمين سيدنا وحبيبنا وقرة أعيننا محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يعصفون وسلاما على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين الفاتحة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم